Okay, in these slides we want to get the magnetic field inside a toroid. So first, let's see how you can get a toroid by considering a group of uh, loops of current. So if you have a loop of one loop of current, this is what the magnetic field looks like. It's very non-uniform. It goes round in loops here. It go this goes round in loops. And what if you take that loop of current and you put another loop of current next to it? Um, with a different angle like this and another one and another one going round in a circle and such that the magnetic field lines point in the same direction. Now as you make the number of loops more and more and more and more closer to each other and many more of the loops then the magnetic field will be going around basically in a circle inside this toroidal shape and the amount of fringing that you see here will decrease and so you'll just get a magnetic field in this region and outside you'll get no magnetic field. So this is the situation we have for a toroid. I only put a certain number of loops uh, with, wi with wide spacing between them so you can see what's happening. But of course, in general, these windings should be very close to each other so that there is no fringing happening at the, at the edges here. So you have here current going on the top of, this, of the toroid, then it goes down below it and then it comes on the top and then it goes below it and then on the top and so on. So when the current goes this way the magnetic field will be going this way. The same way we showed for the loops a while ago. So the question is what shape Amperian loop would we take and where would we put it to solve this problem to use Ampere's law. So let's take um, Amperian loop to be in the shape of a circle. Uh, inside the toroid. And why do we do that? Because then the angle between the magnetic field and the ds vectors will be zero for every single element of, air of length. And so that's the reason why we choose this circle. So the b dot ds becomes b ds. We got rid of the dot product. And the second thing is from symmetry. If you get the magnetic field here or you get it here or you get it here, I don't know what the value is but I know from symmetry everything looks the same when you go around the circle on this on this circle so the mag magnitude of the magnetic field shouldn't change. So I know from symmetry that B is constant at all points on that circle so I can take B outside. And when you take B outside you're left with integration of ds. What's integration of ds? It's just the total length of this circle, circumference. And the circumference of the circle is just 2 pi r. So the left hand side of Ampere's law just gives you B times 2 pi r. Okay, what about the current enclosed? How much current is enclosed inside the circle? You can see here where the current pierces this circle, the area of the circle. Here, the wire goes on the top, then it goes through the circle at this point. And then the wire goes under, underneath, then it comes out outside the area. So of course, we don't take the situation here because here the current is not enclosed. And then it goes above, and then it goes again through the circle over here and then it goes up and so on and so you can see that every winding every single winding contributes once to an amount of current going through the circle and it all goes in the same direction into the page so if you want to get the total amount of current enclosed in this circle it's the number of windings times the current of each winding so if the current is i and the number of windings is n then n times i gives you the total amount of current enclosed in this Amperian circle, Amperian loop. And so if you rearrange terms, you get b is mu naught I, n i over 2 pi r, uh, where n is the number of windings of the, on the, around the toroid.